Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Harvard and last week on the DDNet podcast I made a joke about how I would one day like to do a Let's Play. And that day is now. So uh, I think I mentioned that when I play games I naturally just talk. And that's just what this is going to be. I'm going to be playing one of my favorite games, Enter the Gungeon. And we're going to see how far I can get. Hopefully we can talk a bit about game design. I can make a few jokes. It's not going to be awful. Let me know what you think. I'm just gonna hit play now and see how things go. All right, so I'm actually gonna be going through this tutorial if uh, you've not played this game or if you're not familiar with this game. It's a top-down shooter, so this most similar game I can think of is probably The Binding of Isaac. And here you've got four characters to choose from. Now, my favorite is actually the pilot because this is a game that's a roguelite and it's got lots of different loot drops and the pilot is the one that's the most random. But I feel that uh, I feel that we're going to go with the Hunter because it's much more consistent. I don't want to keep restarting over and over again because that'll be boring. Yep, so let's go with the Hunter. And, alright, just got to make sure that I got all my controls in a bunch. And we'll head straight through to, to, to the tutorial so we can see how this game works. If you want to skip forward, I'll put a note in the description as well just to say what time I finished this uh arbitrary task. Alright, so we're now into the Halls of Knowledge. Press X to speak, for it is I, Sir Manuel. This is actually the most useless uh, thing, you never talk to anybody in this game. Continue through the door to begin your tutelage. Alright, so, uh, most important mechanic, flip tables. Press A, flip that table. The cheese will go flying right away. Um, the cool thing is that tables can be flipped in whichever direction you want, and that'll create some momentary cover so you can deal with the craziness of the bullet patterns here. Alright, so what's this one? Oh yes. So the studio that makes this game is called Dodge Roll because they love this mechanic so much. And I also love this mechanic a lot. It's such a clever solution to just the kind of design they're going for, because it's a bullet hell game, but they need you to have a way to have invincibility, so... Basically, you press the left bumper to do this roll, and while you're in the air, you are invulnerable. And when you're rolling on the ground, you can actually get hurt. So you want to do this and just dodge through the bullets. And how good is this tutorial, by the way, because it's just getting you used to using this move and seeing why it's so important. Alright, dodge roll's also good, because you can go over pits. Alright, this is pretty chill. I'm just not going to talk to him. I actually don't know what he says. It should be fine. Oh, was I supposed to talk to him? Okay, yep, yeah, so these are blanks. You hit them both, and it's kind of like an emergency move. It gets you out of a jam. Let's talk to him. All right, so you've got your first gun. It is a pea shooter. It uh, shoots peas. Yep, it's a pea shooter. And the cool thing about this game is that everything is either gun or bullet themed. So they make a lot of jokes about it, it's great. Let's shoot some peas at him. Okay, so now we use everything that we learned so far. We can flip the tables to make some cover. We can dodge roll out of the way of the bullets. Of course, that was wholly unnecessary, but you know, you gotta show the game that you learned something here. Okay, you can also roll these barrels towards them and do what every game lets you do, which is shoot the explosive barrel. It's pretty simple stuff. So, this is a shotgunner. He, uh, he has a shotgun. Sorry, I know the tutorial is not very interesting. It's. When we get into the dungeon properly, you'll see why this is my, probably my favorite game. Yep, so this is a usable button. 
usable item, I mean. Alright, let's keep going. Oh, yes. So this is a teleporter. You can zip around the stage really easily by bringing up the map and just teleporting to wherever you want to go. This is cool, it really cuts down on the walking around and the weight of most roguelites like this. Okay, so more regular enemies. Uh, I was an idiot and got hit. Usually that doesn't happen. So it's a great mix here of exploration and fast-paced combat and roguelike character progression. So eventually you'll see the core feedback loop of this game. And once you start to realize how many different combinations of characters are possible, it really opens up your options. So yeah, that's the door to the boss. We're not going to go there just yet because we can always pick up a few extra things. So we've got an extra extra treasure chest here. Press Y to switch guns, and if you have two or more guns, you can slow time and pick whatever you want. So we get the classic right here, the AK-47. Of course it is. And we can switch quickly on the fly between that and our P-Shooter. So you see there's a door here, right? But you can't go in there. It's a one-way door, which means that there's got to be some kind of secret entrance. And my guess would be that maybe it's in this room, and you see actually here there's a crack in the wall. So what you want to do is you want to hit your blanks, you open that path. And you get this, which is an old knight's shield. You get this, which is a... Well, once the combo happens, get the old knight's helm. And so if you open up your menu to the Ammonomicon, you can see those items unlocked, and that they show kind of what they do. So this one's given us four armor, so that's effectively four more health, you can see on the top left. Okay, I think that's everything on this floor, so let's go take on this boss. All right. Yep, so now you can see how the dodge roll is going to be really useful. Helps you get out of situations like this. And for the most part, you want to be dodging through bullets because it's a much better way of getting out of the, the flight path. Uh, these green things are uh, hegemony credit. So that's ongoing currency that lasts between rounds when you lose your uh, spent casings and your other forms of currency and that can be used to unlock additional items. Now, uh, I usually play this game with a Switch, and I've unlocked a bunch of stuff, but because I love the dev, dev so much, I actually bought this on PS4, so... I'm not PS4, I bought it on Steam, so I can uh, continue to stream it. And so this is gonna be a new save file, uh, I'm not gonna have unlocked anything, but I think there's still enough cool stuff in just the base version of the game that this first run will hopefully be pretty entertaining. All right, so let's get into the gungeon. There's floor one, Keeper the Lead Lord. And I should explain a bit my, about my character first. So I'm playing as the Hunter. The Hunter comes with this revolver that has infinite ammo. Six shots, it's not too bad. Great reload animation. She also comes with a crossbow, so it's one shot, long reload, and pretty good damage overall. It'll get me through this floor quite safely. And the last thing she has is this dog! How good is this dog? This dog will pick up extra items and just little goodies at the end of each floor. I think that's everything that the hunter comes with. Yep, so that's everything that the hunter comes with. And she's quite good at overall success in the game. She's Her sidearm is very easily usable, so it's reliable when other characters kind of fall off. Now these birds are pretty cool. They 
have these bullets that create this big mass. And this is a fairly small room, but once we get into larger spaces that have more enemies, you'll see how all these enemies come together to create a real challenge. It's uh, funny that I say, let's go see a large room, and they spawn me into the smallest room I've ever seen. Alright, so... Some basic rooms here, some shooting. Nothing really that interesting. Okay, there we go. So this dynamite is going to run at you and then try to explode on you. Like that. Let's get out of the way. Alright, we actually got a chest for winning this. I usually like to shoot the chests because they can be mimics, so I just can't be too careful. We got... What did we get? We got... We got alcohol. Amazing. This game um, knows me maybe a bit too well. Okay. What does it do? I press right trigger? Oh, so it just doubles my bullets. Oh. I feel like the Australian classification board should have some have a word with this game because I've clearly just consumed alcohol and it gave me a buff and no debuff. So I think maybe the rating of this game needs to be changed, you know? Now you can see how there's these two shotgunners and it's getting really hard for me to navigate these bullets. They tend to converge around you and you'll need to be using your dodge roll and all your movement abilities to get out of sticky situations. Whoa, we found the boss room already. I am not ready for that. Yep, so on every floor, there are guaranteed at least two treasure chests and one shop. Oh, we gotta get that guy. Uh, these guys disappear, but if you kill them before they do, they give you some goodies. I got off. Okay, so I'm gonna use my crossbow to clear this out a little bit and then... I want to leave that big knight guy alone because I want to talk about him. I think he is the reason that I realize this game is something special. Now let's lure him out into the open so I can see how he works. See, so it makes this huge bullet pattern, right? And you can't see health bars, but this guy has a lot of health too. It takes a good amount of time to take him down. And the game gives you so many options to dodge that attack. You can dodge roll through it, you can walk around it, you can use some cover, but most players starting out will have trouble with an enemy like that because they'll think, oh man, this guy's attack is huge, how do I get out of it? And once you learn to use the dodge roll and the tables and everything like that, you just have so much fun. You realize the possibilities that this game has to Whoa! Still have not taken a hit yet. Okay, so this is one of the chest rooms. It's a green chest, which means it's actually rare. And I'm gonna come back for it because you need a key to open the chest and I only have one. In case they have a even rarer chest in the other chest room of this floor, I don't wanna waste it. So I might come back for it. You can see there's teleporters, so there's no real need to walk around and waste time like I'm doing right now. All right, so these are prerequisite slimes that are necessary in every game like this. They split into smaller slimes and there's really nothing interesting I can say about the best slimes. You know, treat them the way you treat any slime. Uh, the cool thing that I can say though is that in this game the dodge roll actually deals damage. It's a tiny bit, but it's enough to get rid of these little guys like here. So I can just roll through them. So where do I need to go now? Oh, that's the shop. Okay. So every floor there's a shopkeeper who will sell you some items based on how many shell casings you have. And I think here... So this is, this is almost definitely a secret entrance, so I'm gonna just use my blank. I feel like this game just did that to make fun of me. Anyways, let's buy a key. Let's pretend that never happened. Uh, up here is a... It's a way to sell your items. I don't have anything I need to sell, but this doesn't appear at every shop, so sometimes you might want to make use of it. Okay, let's keep going. Ooh, it's a fireplace room. So, this game has a number of secret levels, and this fireplace is involved with one of them. So, I don't know if you noticed a few blue barrels floating around, like this one here, but you can just roll it around. Let's bring this to the fireplace room.
and you can put out the fire. That'll hit a level, which will open up a room somewhere in this floor, and that's a secret entrance to the secret, super secret, secret area, which I don't think we're actually going to go to in this run because it's a very difficult zone that I don't think I'm ready for with the gear that I have. But if I get something super imbo from one of the chests, then I might consider it. Okay, still sit here. Yep, so these ghosts have uh, AK-47s, as they do. Uh, they're pretty hard to avoid, to be honest. I'm doing okay at the moment, but you're gonna need to use the tables to use everything around you to make sure you don't get caught in the crossfire. Okay, we get some health. Oh, exactly what I thought. So this is the super rare chest. I want to use my key on that. What did I get? A reload stone. Let's check that out in the ammo nomicon. Briefly absorbs enemy bullets and converts them to ammo. The molecules in this rare piece of stone are naturally aligned such that each of their bullets face the same direction. That's cool, I guess. I think that's it's a lot more useful than it sounds, because even though it is a purely defensive weapon, when we get to the boss, you'll see what I mean. Having a way to absorb bullets while taking damage is quite important in this game. Then let's go to the other chest, because that chest that we got in the other room was a passive, or not a passive item, but an, uh, a non-gun, which means that this chest is guaranteed to contain a gun. Let's use my key to unlock it. And what is this? It's a, f it's a vertebra... It's a vertebrae K47. It's a vertebrae K47. It's a, this is a pretty funny game. I, I enjoy it. Okay. Nervous yet? An abomination. This dark weapon was assembled from a fallen adventurer's spinal column in an AK-47 frame. When Nguyen was first exiled from his homeland, he was heartbroken. In his pain, he turned to the gungeon. Okay, that means... Oh, cool, so it shoots bullets that are connected by bonds. That's gonna be really useful against this boss. Yeah, so at the end of every floor is a boss encounter. There, I think there's three different bosses that could possibly appear on each floor, and they choose a certain one randomly. But most of them, they vary in difficulty based on the floor you're on. Oh, so this one's the bird. This is actually my least favorite boss of this floor, but hey, what you gonna do? Yeah, they put in a lot of effort into these animations. Uh, okay, so let's just use our uh, use our vertebrae K47. He's got a pattern that's quite difficult to avoid because it's wider than your walk path. So it's not very easy to circle straight from you. Gotta ah, uh, got hit. You need to dodge roll at the right time. Now, the reason why not getting hit is important is because in these early levels, especially. If you kill the boss without taking a single point of damage, you get what's called the reward of that floor, which gives you an extra health heart container, in addition to the reward you would get from beating the boss. But since we got hit, that means we don't get that. I'm just get a bunch of health, and what weapon is this? The Pox Cannon. What does it do? Souped up t-shirt pant cannon fires tainted apparel. Enemies defeated after contracting the pox will leave a pool of deadly goop behind. Um, so what I usually do is I look over and see how my earnings are after the first floor and do I want to keep going. At the moment I have one decent weapon, I have a very good passive, I have zero keys and 34 casings and I don't have the... I don't have the extra heart from perfecting that boss, so if you'll excuse me, I'm just gonna quickly restart because I think I can do better than that. This is one of those roguelites where the early game really affects how well you do in the late game. If you have a, a good early game, then you're pretty set. You're just gonna snowball your advantage, whereas I think if I continue with that run, I would have died on maybe floor 2 or 3, and it wouldn't have been that fun to watch. Alright, let's go. So that guy with the eye patch is like a veteran version of the bullet guys, and he's quite strong to deal with, so I tried to kill him as fast as I can. These books have really fun looking patterns. They're not very 
threatening. Oh look, my dog found me a blank. Oh. I don't think I'm gonna get that guy, but I also don't think it's gonna be anything useful. Because he usually gives ammo, and you don't need ammo at this stage of the game. Oh, it's a hot container. That's pretty useful. Let's use the crossbow to save some time. You see, it kills these single bullets in just one hit, so it's pretty efficient for this first floor, but it falls off in the later stages. Oh, see, this is the fireplace room. So where's the water canister? Oof. So we've got some grenades coming at us. These uh, blue shotgun shells are sawn offs, so they have a wider spread. And same as the red ones, sometimes when they die, they actually split off into a few bullets. Like that. And that just adds to the chaos of the room. You have so many different things to be aware of when you're walking around and trying not to get hit. Okay, so that's the room. Did we find a water canister? No, we didn't, so I guess we'll have to be on the lookout when we're on the future rooms. Okay. The uh, the Rambo headband bullets are... They have machine pistols, so they fire a bit faster. But otherwise, they have the same health as a regular bullets, so you can kill them pretty easily. Uh, we got a free key out of that. That's awesome. Keys are a very valuable resource in this game, so whenever you get a free one like that, you just... Pick it up right away. It's so important. Alright, so you see that chandelier hanging over the uh, the night guy? You're probably thinking, hey, I can use that somehow. And you'd be right. You just need to find the, the latch. Like that. You hit it. And it falls on him. Oh. Well, it should have fallen on him, but he wasn't standing in the right place. But whatever. You can just shoot him with our pistol. Yeah, sometimes a room is going to be a gauntlet like this, they'll summon heaps and heaps of enemies. Which is great, because if you can avoid getting hit, you'll make so much profit off these uh, shell casings that you can probably buy something good in the shop. I can see it's down there, but the door's locked off, so I'm going to find a way around. Yeah, that's an ammo canister. We don't really need it, but I've used about 8 crossbow bolts, so might as well, you know? Might as well. Some of the shop is the other way. Okay, so we've got a brown chest here, and brown chests are basically trash. They are... If they contain a gun, the gun is usually worse than the starting pistol, so I'm not gonna open it. If, if I get into a situation where I have too many keys, maybe I'll open it, but usually I don't bother with them. Whoa! Whoa! Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, the game will surprise you like that sometimes. Alright, just got some voids. Let's get rid of these voids. Okay, and now we're in the shop. So we've got a blank, a map. The map actually reveals where the secret entrances on the floor are, so it can be useful sometimes. Weapon is a wind-up gun, which is... Just take my word for it, this gun's awful. I think that maybe there is a secret entrance behind these barrels, so I'm just gonna blank it. This game is really messing with me today. I swear that usually when I do that, there's a secret entrance. Anyways, let's buy the key, and let's move on. I missed a heart there, I think. Yeah, here it is. So, with these hearts, if you have full health, you can save it for later, where, and that lets you pick it up from a shop later in the game. Okay, we found the boss. So we've got to head this way and see what treasure we've got in store. I like how many keys I have, but I haven't picked up any loot so far. Okay, so these little shells of wings, uh, they do... They turn themselves into bullets to attack you. They're usually pretty harmless, but you know, everything in this game, the chaos comes at you after a while. Oh, there's the water canister. So you need to be careful to not accidentally shoot it during the room clear, otherwise the, it'll spill and you won't be able to unlock the fireplace. And I think we might actually go there because we have an excess of keys right now. Hmm. 
This is riveting gameplay and I'm pushing a barrel around. Into the fire. Okay. I've almost cleared this floor, I think. It's gonna come down to how good this chest is. It's a blue chest, which means it's uncommon. Let's open it. Let's see what I get. I get... A Ring of Miserly Protection. Which means increases health substantially, but any purchases will shatter the ring. Hmm. It's not great, but... That means that this brown chest is going to be a very bad gun, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna take a crack at this boss and see if I can beat it without getting hit, and if I can't, I might have to do one last reset. Unfortunately, it's the bird again. The other bosses in this game are very cool too. I would love to show them off, but yeah, RNG is not on my side, I guess. So once you get a bit more advanced in this game, you start to learn to not dodge roll and do literally anything else because when you're dodge rolling, you're committing yourself to a certain movement pattern, but you're also uh, preventing yourself from shooting for a little while. And the longer you can go without dodge roll, the more shots you can get in at the opponent. So you can see right now, I don't actually really need to dodge roll because I can just walk my way through his bullet patterns. And being confident with doing this and not wasting your roll, like I just did there and got hit, um, that's how you get good at this game. I've almost killed him, which is the only reason why I haven't restarted just yet. In case the weapon that he drops right now is going to be amazing. Yeah, you can't be afraid of bullets in this game. You have to just walk as close as you can to them because that's the way that you get the get the, the damage in. Otherwise, if you're just going to be dodging bullets all the time, you're not going to damage the boss at all. What did we get? A, Rub a Rubidine Prototype. A Prototype Ricochet Blaster. This blaster was created to test the limits of projectile impact and ricochet physics. Oh, so it's like a Rude Goldberg machine. You fire one shot and it bounces everywhere. And you're meant to create a big chain reaction with it. I love the sound effect. Do you know when the, they had, um... I don't know if it's on the Roland 808, but those synthesizer keyboards, they have the tom tom drum, and it sounds exactly like that, like doo 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 doo. Okay, better restart. You don't want to hear that sound for the next three levels, I'm sure. I'm gonna commit. This is the last restart I'm doing, otherwise it's gonna get real boring. This first floor is quite easy, so I'm gonna try and go through it as fast as I can. Let's hope the RNG is good to me, so I can do a good run, hopefully. Okay, got some ghosts. Again, just don't be afraid of the bullets. Your hitbox is quite small, so if you're used to things like Danmaku or, like, or bullet hell games, basically, then you'll be comfortable with just nicking them without getting yourself hit. Whoa, it's a good chest. So this is an ultra rare chest, and the black chest we saw before was the mega rare chest, or whatever. We've got ourselves a Chaos Amulet. Blanks have a chance to poison, freeze, and ignite enemies. Uh, I don't really use blanks when I play. I really should, but I forget sometimes. So this isn't probably going to do that much for me. Especially since the time that you really want to use blanks is during boss fights, and I think some bosses are immune to the status conditions, so I'm really not sure how useful that amulet is. It might be useful on one of the last floors, because if the room has too many enemies and you blank, you want it to be able to clear it. Alright, so this last enemy we haven't seen before, it swings its ball and chain around, and so it denies a bunch of space in the level. If it swings and you can see that its hand is glowing red, then it's actually going to throw the ball and chain. I'm actually going to stand further away so I can show what happened. Hmm. Usually he does it. This game is really committed to making me look like an idiot today. So I'm guessing he's not going to throw his ball, but if his hand glows, he throws the ball and you need to dodge it, but it's a very unpredictable projectile, so it's good to use the cover of the room. 
We got a key, which is awesome. It's gonna help us in this run a lot, because we just use our first one with the red chest. Oh, it's another key. Okay, I'm pretty keen. I think this is gonna be eh, keen. I'm pretty keen. This is gonna be a good run. I am confident. Yeah, I don't claim to be particularly good at this game. I can... You know, I, I can get... I can beat the final boss on occasion, but not that consistently. I feel like watching really high level players at this game is really elegant because they they use every mechanic in this game to its full ability. Almost like it's second nature. And you get into a sense of flow when you play. You're gonna see these really big crazy patterns and the, the person playing just doesn't get hit by them because they know exactly how it's gonna work. Meanwhile I will roll into bullets sometimes because I'm still learning. What I find is this game kind of has like a pity RNG in it. If you get hit in a room, they'll try to spawn a health item in that room once you clear it. Or near that room. Okay, we've got some shells. Chest is probably here. It's a brown chest. So we got a passive item from the red chest, which means that we've got another bad quality gun now. But on the plus side, we have a lot of shell casings, so if we go to the store, maybe we can find a good one there. And speak of the devil, it's the store. We've got a supply drop, which is really just extra ammo, and extra key. And what looks like a secret entrance. Okay, so let's clear out this floor and let's... I think because we have so many keys and not that many items, I'm actually going to go to the secret level to try my luck. And if I make it through alive, then we're going to cash out because it's effectively like getting two extra chests for free. Actually, three extra chests because you get an extra item for defeating the secret boss too. Okay, here is the boss of the floor. There is a space there, but because I already found the chests, there's not going to be anything interesting. It's probably just going to be some extra enemies, some extra shell casings. Might as well. Leave no stone unturned, right? Oh, it's just the fireplace room. Okay. Let's extinguish that flame. What's that game where you're just rolling barrels around and that's the entire game? I don't know why I'm remembering this right now. Maybe it doesn't exist. Okay, let's go fight the boss. Ooh, so this is the the Bullet King? The Gun King? I can't remember what it's called. The Bullet King! He's always in this big square room. And he's got a very simple pattern that you can strafe through. Uh, he's great for teaching new players how to weave your way through bullets instead of dodge roll. Like for example, that last pattern, you had to weave through it. If you dodge roll through it, they're probably not going to survive very well. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. It's a serious time now. I can sometimes beat them without using a life, but, you know, not always. It's one of the times where I should have used the blank. It would have actually saved me. I think DPS-wise, the pistol does a little bit more the uh, crossbow to this boss. Again, just don't be afraid of the bullets. Weave your way through. Yeah, 
yeah, that was a great, a really well designed boss because it has about three or four different attack patterns and it does two attacks per rhythmic section, which means that it keeps rotating the different types of things you need to dodge. You get a Winchester, which is just a shotgun. I'm pretty happy with that actually. Uh, if I wanted to go to the next floor, I could through this elevator, but I'm not. I'm gonna go to the secret room. So once you extinguish that fireplace, you'll see that extra grey room open up. And there's two locks on the floor, so you want to unlock those and it opens up a trapdoor. And before I forget, I'm actually going to go attack this chest, because sometimes when you blow up a chest, it gives you something. Like here it gave me half a heart. It's still not nothing, you know, it's still every little advantage counts. Okay, so now we're going to head to the first secret level of this game, which is called the Oubliette. I could be pronouncing that wrong. I, don't, I know it's a real English word, I just don't know what that word means. Oh man, that's not a good thing for me to say, I'm an English teacher, but oh well. Chamber question marks. You got the trash cannon unlocked. This floor is significantly harder than the previous floor. Like, look at this guy. He takes so many shots and he always explodes on death and his bullets move super fast. And this guy makes a thing that floats through the entire room. It's 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 madness. It's definitely more than two steps above what was on the previous floor. Whoa. Okay. It's definitely not an easy floor at all. There's also, as you notice, there's a lot more environmental hazards. There's more gaps on the floor that you can fall through. So you really need to be on your toes here. These are Beholders. They have a gun. That's about it, really. The bullet bats uh, break off into smaller bullets when they die. And these weird looking dudes, they can spit poison onto the floor. And the way poison works is that you see when you walk over it... Oh, they got rid of it. But when you walk over it, a little circle appears over your head. And if that circle fills up, then you can take it one damage. Ooh, this is gonna be a hard room. The mushrooms just spread these spores everywhere. Every now and then, a spore will move and try to home in on you. And if you're not paying close attention, that can be very easy to hit you. Alright, that's this room. Oh, no it's not. Ghost! Ghost! Ah! So if I hit my armor, when it hits armor, you lose that armor and you effectively activate a blank, so you knock everything back and you erase all the bullets on the screen. If I was playing this game better, I would be using all the mechanics available to me at once. So I'd be using blanks, I'd be using tables, I would be using the dodge roll, and it would just be like a dance, honestly. Like, you would not be hit because you have so many different ways to not get hit. Didn't see that guy. Okay. I should be using the Winchester now that I think about it. Um, some weapons in this game are good for clearing rooms and some are good for killing bosses. Shotguns are generally quite good for clearing rooms, so the fact that I've been using the pistol so far is my fault. I really deserve to take that hit just then. Yeah, that's the prime example of why you don't want to dodge roll all the time. Because you lock yourself into the same flight path and you can just roll right into the blitz. Here's the shop. I think I just want that key. And... And... And villain. Hmm. That sounds fun. Let's blink. If I have money, I might come back for that. Yeah, even though I've played this game for a year and a half, there's still a bunch of weapons and interactions that I haven't found yet. And I think that's why it keeps me going, is that every run has been consistently different to the point that I never feel like I'm playing the same thing over and over again. Every weapon, there's a lot of really unique weapons in the game. I know that this run we've only just got a shotgun, but there's some weapons that really force you to change up your gameplay style. 
and it just helps to make every run feel unique. It helps to negate the burnout that I sometimes get when I play roguelites because every level just feels the same. See, finally I get one of those secret passageways. Here is a blue chest, which I'm just going to open right away. It is an eye bomb companion app. What does that do? Detonates explosive objects in the current room. Kids these days can detonate explosives from their phones. In the early days of the Gungeon, some form of shooting was required. Yeah, the A plus to whoever writes the item descriptions. This is very clever. I really like it. So I imagine it's like if you have any explosive barrels, you can just press the active button and they'll all explode at once. So that can be pretty good to clear out a room of hazards before you start. I'm assuming that it also should work for grenade enemies. This game is generally quite good at obeying its own internal logic, so I'm almost certain that's how it will work. Yeah. I find the curving patterns like that slime them. Uh, those are quite hard to dodge because they don't really follow general movement rules and I just got hit. Oh, I just got hit again. Ugh. Ugh. Sometimes when you lose a cool, you just get hit a bunch of times in a single room. That's what I mean when I say this floor is hard. I'll lose maybe two or three light, two or three hearts, and then that can put you off a good run because it means that you don't have the hearts to uh, to sustain your way through the next level. I just lost two and a half hearts in that one screen. Okay, so we've got some stage hazards. Oof. I can't actually consistently get through this one without getting hit. I succeeded there, but this is gonna be hard. I'm half a heart away from dying, so anything that hits me will end my run right now. For some reason, I'm not feeling stressed. Remember why I said 10 minutes ago that this is gonna be my run? This is still going to be my run. I'm also confident because the boss of this floor is actually quite easy, so I'm pretty confident that I can kill it without getting hit. If I need to, I can go to the shop and buy a half a heart, but I'm just not going to do that. I'm just going to play it by ear. Nothing's going to phase me. Oh! That really phased me. <laughs> okay, I didn't get hit though. Yeah, so some of the smarter enemies are actually able to to lead your movement. So if you keep moving in the same direction, you'll get hit by their shots, which I think is just crazy. Oh, I got armor. Okay. Oh, it takes some of the edge off, because that means I have two hits before I die. Okay, so these are poison slimes. They're just like regular slimes, but they're poisonous. Wow, great comments every heart. This is... A plus material. I should have tried to see if I can detonate that dynamite from a distance. Okay. Why am I using the pistol again? I already said I should use the shotgun. Okay. Let's keep going. There's a key here. Oh, good dog. This this dog is actually probably the most underrated item in the game. They give you so many goodies that just make your run better. Oh, it does work. Works. You see, this game is just consistent. The logic is very consistent. The boss is through here. I don't think I'm gonna go straight there. I'm gonna clear up the floor a bit. That's a good sound. Yeah, so the goal is really just to keep moving. If you move consistently, then you're gonna get hit a lot less. It's a green chest. I'm just gonna double check that it's not a mimic. I'm so paranoid about this, guys. You have no idea. Okay, that gives me a 
white school and stuff. Increased blank regeneration. The white guan stone grants its bearer an additional blank on every floor. Awesome. So at the start of every floor, you get two free blanks. This will upgrade it to three. Guan stones also rotate around you, and they will help erase bullets they touch. Um, this is a gun recycler. I'm gonna not do anything, because I have the shotgun and I have the crossbow, and they're both pretty good. This is a locked door, and I'll explain what that's for once I beat this boss. Okay, I guess I'm buying the Anvilin. An, an, Anvilin? Practical and safe. What does it say? Fire Sandals. I don't know what I expected. A hometown favorite, the Anvilin has been shown to be the safest and most effective place of dispatching foes with an anvil. <laughs> Amazing. Let's, let's shoot some anvils. Oh, listen, hitting the wrong button. Awesome. It's exactly what I wanted it to do. Okay, let's go fight this one. Actually, let's go blow up that chest because maybe it has hearts in it. I still like to stand back because sometimes they can explode. And that is easily the worst place to end the run. Oh, it is a heart. Nice. I also just had the worst aim with that chest. I feel like I shot six shells at a stationary target and I missed four of them. Why am I even playing this game? I'm terrible at shooting games. Okay, what am I using? I'm gonna use the Anvilin to fight this floor's enemy. It's just a blob. A blob. What's it called? I don't even remember. Blobble, blobble, blobble lord. Okay. Let's fire some apples in. Yeah, his patterns, uh, you can weave through them pretty easily. I don't really have any trouble with this boss. The only downside is that because this isn't considered a real floor, you don't get any health bonuses for not getting hit by him. This is... Uh, I wouldn't say it's hard, but it's not, it's not hard to get... not easy to get used to. You just need to dodge through it. Oh, this is a hard though. So, oh... Uh, that. Yeah, he explodes into small pieces and then reforms himself somewhere on the level. But yeah, every other attack that he has is not that strong. It's pretty easy to just weave through them. Actually, I never noticed the sounds that it makes, but I'm very annoyed by it right now. I hate squelching sounds. Ugh, so many squelchings. There we go. And what I like about this boss is that he leaves this little thingo on the floor and it's it kind of walks towards you but it's completely harmless. If you're really mean you can kill it, but I usually don't. I'm, I'm a pretty nice guy. Alright. Oh, we get the demon head. This is a... Uh, well, I don't actually know how the game describes it. Fires a superheated beam that can ignite enemies. The order of the true gun tells three tales of the demons that dwell beneath the dungeon. All end in fire. The tails or the demons or the dungeons? I guess all of them, because all end in fire, right? So everything's fire. Let's fire this gun. Oh, look how cool that looks. Yeah, the beam weapons in this game look real cool. Do we have any loose ends on this floor? Oh yeah, we do. Okay, so what this room is. That room behind the locked door contains the old crest, and that's your key to get into the second the second secret floor um, I'm actually gonna use this I'm gonna recycle my crossbow and my Winchester to get another random gun oh this is a very good gun it's like a rifle that has a chance of well, turning enemies into chickens, which is effectively just insta-killing them. It's a very good weapon. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with my loot. Let's move on. So the old crest functions exactly like a piece of armor. And 
it takes precedence over armor. So even no matter how much armor you have, the second you get hit, you lose the old crest first. And the old crest is the key to getting to the secret rooms. So you've got to find the entrance somewhere on this floor without getting hit at all. So this is really hard. I don't do it very consistently. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it this time, to be honest. Ooh, that is a secret key. That key unlocks a jail cell somewhere on this floor, and that'll add an extra person to your- Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> yeah, when you unlock the cell, it'll add an extra person to your- to the breach, which is the place in between levels, and- or the hub world, and it's where you can get extra boosts and uh, additional weapons to drop and stuff like that. Um, there's actually very little progression in this game, so you can unlock weapons to spawn in the dungeon, but you generally can't buy any upgrades, like you can't buy an upgrade that'll start you off with an extra heart or anything like that. It's just increasing the amount and the variance of loot that can appear. Yeah, so I just lost my old crest, that's really sad. I said on the podcast that I play better when I'm talking compared to when I'm not talking. I don't know if that's true anymore, I think that maybe this game requires too much of my motor skill, so... Hasn't been great! Yep, so I just turned that guy into a chicken, which effectively means that he's not a combatant anymore. If you're really mean, like with the slime enemy, you can kill the chicken, but I'm not gonna do that because why would I? Look, it's a chicken, it's so cute. Oh yeah, so this... when I said that the Iron Knight enemy was the one that teaches you mechanics of the game, this Iron Maiden also teaches you the mechanics of this game. So it's invulnerable until it opens up, so you have to be, you have to face against this attack. And it shoots off three waves of bullets, which swarm out and then try to home in on you. I just got hit so many times trying to kill that guy. Um, it really teaches you to know your surroundings and to keep moving away from where you were before. Oh, it's a key. Yep, so that's an enemy that runs away from you. If you kill it in time, you get a key. I have five flanks. Why do I have five flanks? I also only have one life left, so maybe I should be a bit more careful. Use one of my five flanks. Yeah. Yeah. You see, it's it's great. You turn them to chickens. Uh, so these are snipers. They snipe you. And this little enemy here, you can see that the other guy over there had a green arrow above his head. That meant he was invincible. And those green cultist enemies will try to make another enemy invincible. So you've got to kill them before you kill the other guy. Riverton commentary. Makes perfect sense. I am a master of English. Yep, so these guys are pretty tough. They have quite a few different attack patterns. Of course, you're not tough if you're now a chicken. Yeah, I think if there is any criticism to levy at this game, it's that gun quality can sometimes absolutely just decide your run. So if you pick up an item like the hexagon pretty early, then it's the game of just trivial, right? You can just waltz through the first two floors and never get hit. Whereas if you're unlucky and you have to go through with just the basic weapon, then of course you're a lot more at risk. These executioners have a gun that it's basically a shotgun, and they can also fire some chains at you. That like that. And if you imagine you're in a bigger room and you have a lot of enemies, and that guy suddenly chains off a part of the level, it can be pretty difficult. Green chest, just gotta double check us on the Y'all gonna think I'm so paranoid that I keep shooting the chest, but legit. Mimics are scary. Is a charmed bow? This uh it charms enemies. I feel like the item descriptions are gonna have the same dry humor that I have. Charms enemies temporarily. The preferred bow of the Pride of Venus before I fall, while its arrows deal little physical damage, they're coated in a potent, potent hallucinogen. Even a slight scratch can confuse friend and foe. Yep, so this will turn your enemies against each other. 
uh, yep, so we can unlock this door for our key. And these guys are basically shopkeepers. You can use your hegemony credits, which you unlock by defeating bosses, to purchase ongoing items, or purchase new items to appear in the gungeon from those guys. And here is where we would have put that old crest, if we still had it. But if you imagine going all the way from here to here, 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 without getting hit a single time, you've basically earned the right to a secret room, because that is a feat. That is a, um, very unlikely to happen in most runs. Yep, I still like my hexagon more, actually. Charmbo is quite good at taking out rooms, but I think hexagon, hexagon is much more consistent. Here's a shop. With a prime primer. I can't exactly remember. Oh, actually, I do remember what it's for. Uh, long story. It's a required item to get the true ending of the game, but you won't really want to go for it until you are more confident with it. Yeah. On the second floor, you're going to get a lot more hazards like this too. Stage hazards can make traversal a lot more annoying, so you just got to be careful. Guns automatically reload in your inventory if you don't hold them for 6 seconds. So if an advanced strat is to shoot a gun that has a long reload and then switch out and then come back to it. Muscle relaxant. I can't actually remember what it does. Greatly increases accuracy and it combos with the hexagon. So when you see that blue arrow it means that by having those two items together you get an additional bonus effect. The game doesn't always say what that effect is. Use the guess based on what the prompt was. Okay, looks like I've cleared this floor. Let's go fight the boss. The floor two bosses are generally a bit harder. There's a few that I can't consistently beat without taking damage, so I might buy the heart and the armor. I know, like, I know, I normally wouldn't do that, but I'm being a bit of a wuss today because. <laughs> I feel like my, my skill is on the line now that I'm going to put this on the internet, you know? Oh, this is probably my favorite boss of the entire game, the Beholster. It's one of those bosses that just kind of st sits in the middle of the room and just sprays a bunch of crap at you. And the strategy is just to avoid the crap in the best way you can. It'll uh, make additional smaller enemies, it'll shoot all these different things at you. It'll fire rockets, and these rockets, you got to destroy them before they home in on you. The demon has a very good weapon against this boss, so hopefully I can defeat it without taking a hit. Normally, if you're using a weapon that has a very slow reload, like the hexagon, uh, you're going to have trouble with the rockets, because you're going to need to spend an entire round defeating the rocket, and that really cuts down your DPS against this boss. Okay, I think we killed it without taking a hit. Alright. So when you see that prompt below when it says it's unlocked, it doesn't get added to your inventory, it just means that it's now available in some chests. So when you beat a boss without taking any damage, you get one of these. The Master Round, which you see increases my life by two, or well, one. And I got a Void Shotgun. It's just a shotgun. Semi automatic, the favored weapon of the void cause frontline soldiers. Its short range ensures that any encounter will be lethal one way or another. Okay, cool. It's just a shotgun, I don't, I don't get the point. Anyways, let's whip out the hexagon and let's keep pushing forward. If we got four blanks, next floor they actually just reset, so I might as well go and blank in all the rooms and see if I can find some secrets like here. I just got a Winchester rifle. It's not great, but we'll do. The red boxes are, uh, they refill half the ammo of your main gun and 20% of all your secondary weapons. So that's great. It's definitely what I really need right now. I have so many guns. 
Look at all these guns. The cool thing is you'll, you'll amass a huge arsenal by the time you get to the end of the game. Like, look, this has been two floors. There's five floors in this game. Just imagine how much crap you're going to accumulate and all different combos you're going to be able to achieve by doing that. It's great. Okay, and welcome to floor three, little black powder mine. Here is where things get real hard. Ignore that, that, that was just a dumb move by me. But most enemies on this floor are a lot more aggressive, or you see that pattern, they have patterns that force you to be more active in your dodges. You can't just cruise around like you did in previous levels. So sometimes, very rarely, a chest will just spawn after you finish a room. And this is basically a bonus item because every floor has a guaranteed two chests. And so any additional chests are... We'll just be thankful for them because you normally wouldn't get them. Occasionally refunds ammo on bullets miss. So what it's saying is, this is a pity item. If I played the game well, I would not need it at all. Okay, thank you game. You're really flattering me today. Yeah, what, the main thing I don't like about some of the passives is that you just don't notice them having any effect at all. Whereas the guns, most of them are crazy enough that they, they're they exciting. When you get a new one from the chest, you're keen to find out what it does. And even though some of the gimmicky ones are completely useless in a regular playthrough, it's still fun, it's still funny. I would has a, an argument that just about every single gun in the game is good enough to beat the game with, if you're good enough, but of course some of them are You wouldn't want to beat the gun with just a basic pistol, but theoretically it's possible. Okay, so this spider enemy is kind of like a mini boss. I say that and I kill it in two shots, but it creates hard patterns and... I have no idea why I just took that much damage. Oh, it's because that's a spike trap. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of floor hazards on this floor. It's a clown mask. It's a crossover item with the Payday games, and the only real way to get it, because you can't get that much money in one go, is to steal it. And I think I can actually steal it. Let me see. Let's grab the charmed bow. Let's shoot the shopkeeper. Oops, I missed him. Wait, no, hold on a second. He has this aura that doesn't let you shoot him. Okay, I'm just not going to do it then. I forgot. You need an item called the Charm Horn, and then that can get him to give that to you. Well, if you shoot too many times a shop, he pulls out a gun and he tries to kill you. So let's maybe not do that. Let's go back to Hexagon. Hexagon. Yeah, so this floor also introduces minecarts as an additional hazard. Sometimes enemies will ride them to make their attack patterns harder to predict. And you can ride them too, for some reason. There's very little strategic relevance, so I rarely do it. That cultist enemy that I just killed, I actually can't remember what they do, but... It would have been a good opportunity to explain the game's mechanics, I just... Yeah, I'm a bit over it right now, as you can see. I just want this run to be good, guys. Come on. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna get to floor 5, I'm gonna beat the final boss. It's gonna be awesome. Third playthrough on a new save file, on a new console, on a control stream I'm not familiar with. It's gonna happen. Yeah, so I'm playing on a PS4 controller. I'm used to the Switch Joy-Cons. They're basically the same, though. That's why the, that's why you see me accidentally use that explosion item over and over again instead of firing my gun. It's because the buttons feel a bit different in my hands. Okay. 
And the Phoenix? I don't actually know what this is. I've never seen it before. Muzzle filler can ignite enemies, returns enemy dust. Famously wielded by two shot Arius on her final gungeon attempt. There's a little bit of lore in some of the item descriptions. I've never fully understood it. Oh, okay, so it's like, kind of like a close range pistol. I'm not gonna use it. Some guns are kind of just average. Okay. I'm gonna be paranoid and shoot the chest. One of these days, it's gonna be Vimic, and I'm going to be vindicated. Just today is not that day. It's a grenade launcher, nice. I take it back, that's completely useless. Okay, we might actually leave it here. Okay, so I didn't realize how long this video has gotten. I think let's just try and see how this boss goes, and we'll go from there. The floor 3 boss is actually a lot harder, in my opinion, so I don't actually know if I'll get through it, even though my gear right now is pretty good. Unfortunately, you can't move past the room until you've cleared it out, so that's what makes a run take so long in this game. You can't just run past things you don't want to uh, fight. This is a... Ice Cube. Active items begin their cooldown period sooner and cooldown faster. Most items in the dungeon overheat for a brief time when used. This Ice Cube is perfect for cooling them off. It's so useless. Okay, this is a um a, a room for completing the true ending quests. I'm just not gonna mess with it right now. I actually think the the quest to get the true ending is a very clever implementation, so if this game interests you at all, I've actually not spoiled very much of it. It's definitely a mystery to discover. What is this? This is a... I can't pronounce this. A Mind Flayer. I thought it was gonna be one of those like CTH things, but I guess it's not. Oh, I get it! It drops mines! <laughs> Whoa, this is great and terrible. Let's find something with better DPS. None of this is very DPS. Oof. This is an easier version of this boss because sometimes it's in a room without any cover, and in dodging that without cover would be so difficult. And I am not going great. I'm out of blanks. So one of those bells is the real one. There we go. Ugh. You know what I always say is that you can weave instead of dodge rolling? And this is past my ability. I can't weave through that. It's too much for me. I do think we're gonna get past it, but I don't think we'll have enough health to really survive level 4. two half hearts and a 38 special for the inquisitive what does it do simon of, of choice for investigative efforts doesn't say anything it's just a pistol i'm sure it's a reference to some kind of detective fiction i think i really should know but i don't let's keep going
level 4, hollow. I know I say this at every floor, but it gets really hard from here. Yeah, the screen gets a bit crowded when there's too many enemies, and sometimes it's hard to figure out what's safe and what's not. Ooh, this is the Reaper. This is actually a, um... It's invincible, and it keeps firing off these curving bullets, and so you just gotta keep running if you ever encounter it. This is also a very cool enemy. It creates a shade of itself, and then it runs at you, and the shade of itself is invulnerable, so you need to find the invisible version of it that's currently haunting the room. These guys also create shades of themselves and shoot bullets, and only one is real. Uh, I don't know why I praised one and I sound disappointing, disappointed over the other bit. That's it. Okay, those guys create a version of itself. Everything on this floor creates a shade of itself now that I think about it. We get an armor. I could have sworn that was going to be a secret entrance because the boxes were exactly where they should have been too. Okay, we get one key and it's move on time. Things get a lot more expensive the deeper you go, so if you don't spend your money in the early levels, it's not going to be worth it in the later ones. I feel like now that I've stuck with the hexagon, the footage is going to be <laughs> quite uninteresting because everything is just the same. There's no... there's not as much tension as the earlier floors, and that's one of the other things I like about it is that, you know, sometimes when you play roguelikes, the opening levels are just muscle memory and it's just boring, but I find that the opening of Enter the Gungeon is very fun, and if you happen to get really decked out, then the later floors are what feels boring, because every room has effectively the same solution. I missed a key though. There's actually a, um, there's a thing called the resourceful rat, and if you leave a room without taking a resource, the rat will steal it and leave you a, uh, an insulting note, and you don't want to receive insulting notes because no one likes being insulted, you know, so you gotta remember to take all your Take all your stuff. This is just a brown chest, but it's also armor and a blank. I'm happy with that. And it's in health. I don't get an item, but I'm happy with that still, because that's effectively three health that I just got. It'll help me survive this next boss. It's rare enough for me to reach the fourth floor that I can't confidently beat all the bosses on this floor. You don't get a lot of practice in if you don't see it that often. Oh. And you don't get a lot of practice in if you don't survive until the boss of the floor anyway. Yeah, so going after the shade is actually completely useless. You might be much better off looking for where the real one is by taking a, like a beam weapon and just spraying everywhere. Yep, there he is. Alright, got him good. Yeah, the game is quite good, and the enemy designs do a lot of work in this. It's quite good at preventing players from getting too complacent. There are always ways to make things more efficient by changing up your loadout. And for a game with a uh, loadout that's crazy, I think that's a really good solution. Those red enemies can steal your bullets and fire them back at you. It's good to use weapons that only have one or two shots against them, as opposed to like a machine gun, because they'll just steal so many bullets. That is a bullet idol. What does it do? 
deals damage to en enemies when bearer is wounded. Completely useless. I don't want that. This is just personal preference, but I don't like things that reward you for getting damaged. This is a shrine. I can't remember how you use this shrine. I think you drop a usable item in front of it. Or a something in front of it. Make an offering. Okay, I don't know how to use it. Shrines will let you generally trade one resource for another. But they're pretty cryptic. They're not very clear on how they work. It's just one more of those mysteries that you discover the longer you play for. Oh, this is another one of those uh, true ending rooms. I'm not gonna spoil it. Yeah, the crazy thing is, I think the true ending takes a decent amount of time. If you don't want to use a guide, it takes, I would say, probably about 20 to 30 hours of play just to figure out. And when I reviewed this game back in 2018, I'm gonna be honest, I played like 20 hours, but I didn't really get into the mystery of it all. So, oof, this is weird. I've never seen that before. I only played about 20, uh, 15 to 20 hours. I didn't really get the true ending. I didn't understand everything there was with this game. And plus, they the developers came out with two additional, I think actually three additional content packs to add more rooms and enemies and items to the game. And I originally gave it a, was a shotbow? It's a shotgun, shot, crossbow. I originally gave it a four out of five and I thought it was a pretty good score. I liked it, but from there, I actually just, I kept playing it, and I just kept playing it, and kept playing it, and I played 50 hours, and it still didn't get boring for me, which is, it's a real feat. I also love Risk of Rain, and Risk of Rain got boring for me after about 20 or so hours, so that's really good last ability in this game, especially if you like twitchy top-down shooters, and are okay with some RNG, this is just, it'll take you so long to find everything in it and it's just always delight if you're finding new things it's just delightful I'm getting a bit sloppy right now because i've been playing for a long time uh okay i don't have a key for that so i might come back to it oh well, that's so you can sell things here to get some caps i'm not gonna do that because i don't think there's anything on this floor worth buying there is a shop on the final floor but everything is really, really expensive. And by that time, either you have your full build, or you don't, and you're not gonna beat the final boss. So, it's not that useful. Uh, okay, I gotta find a good weapon for this. Maybe I'll use the grenade launcher. Oh, this boss. The wall monger. See, it, it's, it's just classic run of the mill video game wall boss. It's gonna move down at you and you just need to not get you need to not get crushed by the end of it. Whoops. What? Whoa. I wish that lasted a bit longer. That's very unceremonious. Cause Yeah. I wish I could have showed up how that boss works, but I just got hit by some random shot. Dang. Okay, that run lasted for 46 minutes, 42 seconds. I got something like 20 items. It was pretty fun. If that seems fun to you, I would absolutely go out and get this game. If anyone, of course not, but if anyone from Dodge Roll is watching, oh my goodness, you guys are amazing. Please keep doing what you're doing. I enjoy Enter the Gungeon so much, and I think I speak for everyone who bought this game to say that the, the work that's in this game is absolute quality. So the animations and the music and the mechanics and the design, everything is just fantastic. So if this interests you at all, I highly recommend getting it. This run, I would say, scratches this maybe 1% of what this game has to offer. There's so much deeper in here, the different characters, the different items, the combos, and the, the synergies. It's just every run is so different. It's so much fun. Please go out and get this game. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you like this format, don't like this format, if there's anything else you want me to take a look at. If you want me to stop talking when I play, up to you, you know. This is just me trying things out. But yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day.